In my last video, we learned about turning mummies into blanks, which involves beveling, putting wires on a reed tube, and using glue to seal it. Now we'll move on to the materials needed for a first day scrape, which are the following. A guillotine, a dial indicator, a cup of water, an X-Acto knife, a holding mandrel, a ruler, a pencil, a triangular diamond file, a flat diamond file, needle nose pliers, pliers with a cutter, and a plaque. Not pictured is the blank. The guillotine was made by Reeds and Stuff, and the dial indicator by Rieger, both of which are available through Miller Marketing. The holding mandrel is by an unknown maker, though similar products are available through double reed purveyors. The triangular diamond file is made by Grobey. The flat diamond file, exacto knife, and both sets of pliers are available at Canadian Tire, Home Depot, or Home Hardware. Jessica Goldbaum, bassoonist and contrabassoonist with the Auckland Philharmonia Orchestra, designed the plaque, which can be purchased at Midwest Musical Imports and Forest's Music. I've taken the blank and measured 28 millimeters from the top of the first wire to the uncut blade and marked this with a pencil. Now it's time to use the guillotine to cut the tip. I'm shaking out the removed material from the back of the machine. Here is a close-up of what the blank looks like after it has been trimmed to length. Next, I need to smooth down the corners to prevent them from being frayed as I trim the reed. I'll use the flat diamond file to do this. I use gentle strokes and only draw the file downwards in one direction about three or four times rather than sawing back and forth over the area. Here's what it looks like now. Now I'll define the collars, which is the part where the softer material of the blade meets the bark. I'll need the holding mandrel so I can rest the blank on the edge of the table and the diamond file to take off material. The file should be at an angle that is approximately 45 degrees or a little less. The edge of the file, rather than the flat part, is what is doing the work. I'm pressing firmly enough and sawing back and forth, rotating my left wrist to turn the reed so that I maintain the same angle with the file as it removes material. Now I'll turn the blank over and do the same thing to the other side. It's time to measure the critical point, which is 8 millimeters below the tip. For this step, I'll need a dial indicator, also known as a micrometer, which measures the cane in hundredths of a millimeter. It is acceptable for the critical point to measure between 60 and 64 hundredths of a millimeter. I find that closer to 60 is best. The side with the cross of the first wire facing downward, or the wire downside, measures 71, which is very heavy. I need to set my profiler to take off more material for future pieces of shaped cane next time I use the machine. Now I will swap sides to the wire upside, which is the side with the cross of the first wire facing upward. I like to mark the critical point with a pencil to keep an eye on it while I am trimming the reed. It measures 69, so it is also still quite heavy. Now that the critical point is marked on both sides, I can draw on sun rays. This is to remind me of how I will use the Grobe file to trace over the reed to remove material in smooth tapers. The file starts at the center point and pivots around this spot in infinite directions extending out of it, but not below the horizontal line. Normally I would avoid the line in the middle, but since the critical point is so heavy, I will need to proportionately remove cane down this line as I bring the critical point to where it needs to be. Now I'll do the same thing to the other side. The reed should be soaked before inserting the plaque to prevent the blade from cracking. I have dipped the blank in water before proceeding. I'll need a cup of water, the plaque, the Grobe diamond file, the holding mandrel, and a pencil. It helps to occasionally dip the Grobe file in water. I am rotating my left hand like a profiler and will use the file to smoothly taper from the critical point out to the tip and the corners. 
By changing the angle of my left hand, I can maintain the same angle of the file, which should be roughly parallel to the table. The angle of the read is changing, but the file continues to remain steady. In this way, it is easier to achieve more symmetrical tapers. This is how the profiler works, with the read staying stationary while held in place on the machine as the barrel turns. I've marked the critical point with 60 to 64 to remind myself that this is the ballpark measurement I'd like to aim for. Normally I would go up on the edge of the file closer to the corners, but because there is so much material, I am using the flat part. Off camera, I redrew the sun rays and did more of the same work in the front third, all the while making sure the reed was properly soaked. I also flipped it over to do the same thing to the other side. I'm now going to integrate the work I've done into the middle third and back of the blank. I'll speed this up for right now and go over this in more detail shortly. You'll see that I'm now rolling the file right over the critical point because it's heavier than 64. If it had been at 64 or slightly below it, I would have avoided working on that spot any further. For demonstration purposes, I'll only show this on this blade, but I'll do this to the other side as well. It's a good idea to check the critical point again with the dial indicator. The wire downside measures 65, and the wire up measures 67. There is still further work to do. I'm now rolling the file more deliberately over the critical point, specifically working overall in the middle and front thirds to leave the back as heavy as possible. I'm aiming to taper the reed beyond the plaque, which I'll discuss more when I put in the tip bevel. Now I'll do similar work to the other side. It's now time to put in a tip bevel, or initial cut. Here's a picture of the reed with no tip bevel. You can see how the cane's taper just stops at the tip. Normally, this is something to do before scraping. However, since this blank was so heavy, the tip bevel would have been smoothed out as I removed enough material to achieve an appropriate thickness. This means I would have to redo it, so I've saved this step for last. To quote my teacher, Benjamin Kamens, I am aiming for an imaginary point on the plaque, in keeping with the idea of the reed existing as a part of an infinite theoretical plane. You can hear the knife actually hitting the plaque. The idea is to taper half a millimeter at the tip by 45 degrees. I want to be careful not to be too forceful or feel like I'm scooping or pulling the cane towards me, because this can make the tip ragged or even shorten it inadvertently. This final taper is critical for proper response, which has the right immediacy of attack while also providing enough resistance so that my air has something to push against. I'll cover an additional technique to refine this bevel in my video on a second day scrape. Okay, so I've got my bassoon, got the reed, the reed is on the bassoon. So let's give this a try. That thudding sound that you heard was me trying to articulate the reed, but it wasn't responding to the amount of air pressure that I like to use to play at a comfortable dynamic on a finished reed. This is a sign that the reed is too heavy, meaning that it has too much material on it. Normally, if this happens, I would go back to doing more work, but for demonstration purposes, right now I'm going to use a combination of embouchure and air pressure to give this reed what I think it needs to play. Other than how much effort it takes to play, 
is how sharp the reed is throughout the range of the instrument. Since I don't yet have enough information to determine whether or not this is a good piece of cane, I'll go back to doing more of the same work by proportionally removing cane all over the reed. Since the critical point is now very close to where I need it to be, I would integrate the work that I did in the front into the middle third and back of the reed. I try to make the back as heavy as possible to preserve the resonance in the tenor register and allow the lower register to speak freely without closing down. With the additional overall work that I've done to this reed, I notice that the pitch is flatter and the sound is more resonant. In a nutshell, the purpose of a first day scrape is to do the minimum amount of work that you would do to every reed. To quote my teacher, Benjamin Caymans, in other words, you haven't wrecked the reed yet. So on that note, I'm going to leave this reed for today and I'll come back tomorrow for a second day scrape.